Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Steph. So today I want to talk about quickly the state of software development. Specifically, I want to get into the top languages of 2021. This is a reoccurring theme on this channel uh, where you see a lot of young developers on YouTube and elsewhere. They'll tell you about how because this particular language, this particular stack, whether it be Mern or Express or JavaScript versus Go versus Rust, they'll get into why you should learn that technology because of the merits of the technology. It's a little bit faster or it's better at writing this code or better at that. I suggest, and what I've been teaching people for a long time, and I've been a developer since the 90s, is that the first thing you got to look at is the opportunities in terms of jobs. It doesn't matter if you think that Go, as an example, and I'm not picking on Go, I'm sure it's a good language, just because you think Go is the bee's knees, is the best thing since sliced bread, if there's no jobs in Go, then there's no Go with Go. So you have to first and foremost look at the job opportunities of whatever stack you look into. Number two, you have to look at what's fun for you. You may see that there's a lot of opportunity in data sciences with Python, but if you don't like that type of coding, then it's not very fun, is it, right? Um, the third point I want to bring up is that when you become a, an experienced developer, you're going to stop thinking in terms of this language or that language or this framework or that framework. You're going to start thinking in terms, I'm just a developer. And you will be able to go around and pick and choose jobs based on your, your likes and dislikes. And you'll be able to pivot from one language to the next. So I'll give you an example of my own career. I started out writing basic Perl code back in the early 90s. Then I got into uh, JavaScript in the mid-90s. I got into uh, VB script of ASP.NET and a bunch of other languages. What you will find is as you get more experience in the development game, your ability to, to pivot from one language to the, back, to the next, to the next, to the next will become easier and easier and easier. So for example, let's say you cut your teeth on MERN or MEAN. Let's say you know, you're, you're good with Mongo and you're good with Node, you're good with JavaScript, you're good with React and everything's fantastic. And then all of a sudden you find you have a job where you have to do c -sharp .net. Is it the end of the world? Oh no, oh no, no. For you to go from that stack, from the JavaScript-based stack, to the c -sharp .net stack would be pretty easy. In fact, you'd be up and running pretty quickly, uh, perhaps within a week, if not sooner, depending. Again, this is based on my own experience. When I, especially in the last couple of years of my freelance career, I would walk into a job and I would sit there and say, okay, what do we got to do here? And then I would choose the stack, I would choose the technology based on the particular needs of that job. Sometimes I would use my stack of choice at that time, that was Java, I was a Java programmer. I had my own MVC framework, which I like to leverage. But sometimes I would use some very specific domain, specific language that you've never heard of before, because just for that job, that's what was required. And what you're going to find in time that it becomes fun learning new stacks. It becomes very interesting seeing how, for example, the .NET world handles web apps versus the JavaScript world versus the PHP world, etc. So to recap in this video, when you are considering uh, what technologies to learn, if, you're, if that bothers you, first thing, look at the available jobs, right? As I said, if there's Go could be great, but if there's no jobs in Go, then there's no Go with Go. What you're probably going to find is going to be a lot of Java jobs, a lot of PHP jobs, a lot of Python jobs, a lot of C -sharp .NET jobs, a lot of C++ jobs. So, you know, it, of course, a lot of JavaScript Express jobs as well. Um, so you check out the job market. And then next thing is it's just as important. You want to figure out what you like because it's no fun coding something you don't like. So do what you like. And finally, you got to try to level up your game graduate beyond that limited thinking that you are this type of coder. I am a MERN coder. I am a PHP developer. I am whatever, right? You want to get beyond that. You want to become like uh, the best MMA fighters. You know, they, they'll lean towards striking or grappling. They'll do some jujitsu. They'll do some wrestling and maybe do some judo. But at the end of the day, they're MMA fighters. They're well-rounded fighters. So they'll have their things that they're good at, but they, they all have a good range of skills if they want to be successful. That's how you got to think of yourself as a developer. 
If you're interested in learning how to write code and you understand the importance of learning the basics, you should check out my courses below, links below. Check out the Google reviews, just type in studioweb.com, reviews, Google. You see all the reviews, all, all five stars pretty much. If you're a total beginner, fantastic course. If it's a fantastic set of courses. If you want to start being a freelancer, you check out stuff below, etc., etc. Also, I've recommended books below for people who are just starting out and for people who want to level up, level up their game very, very quickly. Refactoring book. There's one on Java, one on JavaScript, and there's also one on design patterns, which is super important. So after you do your fundamentals, you should be doing two to three projects. Then you should get into design patterns and refactoring. That's going to supercharge your, your coding career, not doing a bunch of tutorials. All right, hope that helps. Thanks for watching the video. This is a new video style for me. I have a, a super expensive cinema camera. I don't know where I put it. It's back there somewhere. Um, but I'm just trying out this iPhone 12 just for the fun of it. All right, we'll talk soon.